It's getting kind of chilly and it's getting kind of dark. So I'm going to head into Costco and I'm going to go to the refrigerated section and see what kind of tasty, healthy things they have. So I'm talking things like the tri-tip, things like the chicken, things like the potatoes. I want to break them all down and see which ones are the cleanest, but which ones also make the most sense from a calorie standpoint, a carb standpoint, a fat standpoint, and you name it. What's going to work well for keto, what's going to work well for paleo. That way we have a breakdown of all the different foods that are in that category. So let's head on in. I hope that we don't get kicked out. I'm in a different location this time, visiting some family. It's dark, it's cold, it's kind of creepy out. Let's head in. I feel like the refrigerated section is sort of the forgotten section of Costco. It's like the, you know, the random stepchild that they just <laughs> don't give a lot of attention to. We can find some really cool stuff there. We oftentimes think that it's just going to be highly processed stuff. The reality is that refrigerated section is full of hidden gems. That's what I call little fun things that we find at Costco that work for different diets. They're hidden gems. And there's lots of cool stuff there, but there's also a lot of deceiving stuff. Things that seem like it would be healthy, but then when you break down the ingredients, you are absolutely appalled at what's in that stuff. So let's check it out. It's, it's nice and quiet in Costco this evening, so this is great. All right, let's see what we have in this category. Let's jump right into some of this stuff. Already found something super cool. Now, I found this in the non-refrigerated section before too. Might even get better bargain that way, but still a nice find nevertheless. Four individual packs, organic beets, for $8.69. Now these are California prices. Anywhere else it's gonna be a lot cheaper. Let's see if there's anything weird in them. Nope, organic beets. Here's what's really cool about beets though. Even if you're doing a low carb diet, it's a great way to get a small amount of carbs in if you're just feeling like you need a little bit after a workout or something. So we have 10 grams of carbohydrates in just a half cup serving. So I know that sounds like a lot because on a low carb diet it is, but generally speaking, this is a pretty good deal as far as carbohydrates are concerned. So the thing that's cool about beets is beets not only are they perfect ratio of what is called fructose and glucose, they are also super rich in nitric oxide. So if you're looking for a post-workout meal and you want a little bit of carbs, they are a perfect thing to have because the ratio of glucose to fructose enhances the absorption into the muscle, meaning you're gonna recover from your workout a little bit better. But better than that, that nitric oxide increases blood flow to the muscle, meaning you can potentially get more nutrients delivered to the muscle, and therefore your post-workout protein can get into the muscle better. So it works so well because of that. So whether you are keto or not, it just works well. So even when I'm eating low carb, I will have some of these beets, maybe just 10, 15 grams of carbohydrates post-workout because it doesn't kick me out of ketosis because it allows those carbohydrates to get into the muscle so fast and not sit in my bloodstream, kicking me out of that low carb state. Now, if you're not keto, they're still tremendous, obviously. They're even better if you're not keto because you can eat more of them. And I don't want to spend a ton of time on the salads because I feel like we're just going to be beating the same thing over and over and over again. Soybean oil this, soybean oil that, high calories this. It's just not worth it to spend this time on the video doing that. What's this edamame though? see if there's anything weird out there. It is non-GMO, which is nice. Let's see here. We have organic soybeans and salt. Not a bad price for that, $4.99. So if you're really looking to get edamame, it could work out perfect. Of course, we just run into the same issue with soy as we usually do. I usually recommend soy in small amounts. So if you're looking for just a little snack to have as an appetizer, that is a tremendous value. And protein-wise and keto-wise, low-carb-wise, it would work out perfectly. It's just not something you want to be eating a lot of. Now I found something that I'm super stoked about. I'm not thrilled on the price, but it is a super good dish. Now it's $15.49, which isn't the best price, but it's not bad considering how many servings you get. Let's see, we get four servings. So we have less than $5 a serving, you know, about four bucks-ish a serving. Pretty phenomenal there in terms of price when you look at how much protein you get per serving. 35 grams per serving is really, really, really good. So the reason that I am so in to Chipino is because it is a medley of just about every high quality protein and mineral rich food that we could have. So we're looking at mussels, clams, shrimp, scallops, squid, and fish in a little bit of American sauce. Now, when I look at the ingredients, I'll flip this around and show you. There's a couple things I don't like, but by and large, I'm going to approve of this one. We have mussels, fish, haddock, or cod. Both are good, hopefully it's cod. 
clam, shrimp, scallop, squid, American sauce, which is crushed tomatoes, lobster, stock. That's it. Water, lobster, onion, diced tomatoes, white wine, a little bit of colo oil. I'm not happy about that. Uh, tomato paste, shallot, garlic, rice flour, but it's towards the bottom. I'm not worried about it. That's just in the tomato paste. Seven grams of carbs, two of which are fiber. So five grams of carbs, a lot of sodium, but so much protein all coming from something that is so rich in zinc. If you're looking for immune boosting fish, immune, immune, excuse me, immune boosting foods, or I should say immune supporting foods, this would be a nice blend there because the immune system needs zinc to transfer and allow the immune system to do its job properly. By and large, we do not get a lot of zinc in our diet because our soil is so depleted in minerals. So zinc activates something called the ZIP8 transporter in a cell. So it can allow an antibody to do its job better. It can, long story short, it is very important, but it's also very, very important just for proper mineral balancing and allowing other mag, um, things like magnesium and copper to do their job. Anyhow, nice full spectrum there. Definitely makes the cut as a top find for me today. What about this chicken tortilla soup? I'm a big fan of chicken tortilla soup, but I'm going to guess that there's not a lot of good stuff in this one. Tremendous price, $7.99. We have chicken stock, we have concentrate white meat chicken, salt, diced tomatoes, calcium chloride, tomato puree, water roasted poblano, green chili, whole grain flour. You know, if it wasn't for the tortilla chips in this, this wouldn't be too bad. Uh, it makes it a little bit high carb, but it's also not organic. And for that price, I'd like to see it organic because it's not really that much soup that is pretty inexpensive to make. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot of weird oils in there. Let me double check. Um, I see some vegetable oil, cottonseed, corn, and or sunflower, but at least I don't see soy. So on a scale of one to 10, I'd probably give it a food score of maybe three or four. It's not terrible, but it's not something I would prefer. The broccoli cheddar, this fools a lot of people into thinking that it might be something for keto. But if we look at the ingredients, I can almost assure you it's not gonna work on a low carb diet, but let's see anyway. Here's what it looks like at the front. Here's what it looks like at the back. We got 300 calories for seven servings per container. We have broccoli, water, whole milk, processed cheese. So good ingredients to start for the most part. And then we get into some stuff. Where's the carbs coming from? Gluten-free soy sauce, cornstarch. I don't really know. Uh, carbs might be coming a lot from the broccoli because I don't see any sugar added. So usually when you see sugar in the label like that, but you don't see sugar added, you can usually guess that the sugar is probably coming from the, um, the broccoli, which is the first ingredient. And broccoli does have a lot of sugar from a sugar called raffinose. Most of us don't break down raffinose. We don't have the enzyme to break it down. So that's why broccoli can sometimes give you really weird gas. It's the raffinose. It is a sugar, but it's an indigestible sugar. So when you see sugar coming in from raffinose or from broccoli, usually it's not causing that much of a net carb issue in your body because your body's not breaking it down. So anyhow, uh, that's not as bad as I would have thought because five of those sugars or five of those carbs are coming from the indigestible raffinose. So let me look at that ingredient one more time. So in that case, 14 grams, two grams of fiber, that brings us down to 12 minus five raffinose. We're really looking at like seven grams of carbs in a one cup serving, which would absolutely be okay in small amounts. So yeah, that makes a decent cut and it's relatively clean. Most of it's coming from heavy cream and that price is really good. Now listen, everyone, I'm Italian. I love my carbs. I want my carbs, but... I want my pasta the most. And unfortunately, I haven't seen any gluten-free pastas lately. And I'm looking right here, I see this Monterey creamy seafood. Here, let me flip this around. Now I've talked about in many videos why I'm cautious of things that aren't gluten-free these days. You're probably seeing even Oreo announce that they're coming out with a gluten-free option because there's so much demand for it. It's not just that people with celiac uh, don't want it, people in general don't want it. They run into all kinds of gastric issues. There's so much evidence out there that it doesn't digest well and it can trigger all kinds of potential autoimmune issues and cross react with people that do have autoimmune conditions. It just makes sense to avoid it. Just came across something else that I wanna show you and that is the pesto in this section, which I've seen before and I've talked about in other videos, but you're ready for a little interesting something? All right, here's what it looks like. First of all, this one is leaking oil all over my hands and this is disgusting feeling. It feels rather odd. Uh, we have a basil blend, which is fine. The second ingredient is sunflower oil. Not fun. I don't want that. Okay. Sunflower oil in a pesto, this really should be olive oil. And I'm sure they have some olive oil in there somewhere. Let's see. Sunflower, Parmesan, part skin milk, salt, pine nuts. Extra, yeah, there we go. Extra virgin olive oil. So pine nuts, of course, are going to be in pesto. But pine nuts are a very high omega-6 fat. So they're not the best nut to begin with. 
So I usually like straight up basil pesto with minimal amounts of pine nuts in it. Although I understand that pine nuts give it the taste. So how do we counteract that? Well, we counteract the fat profile by having a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. Because extra virgin olive oil, although technically has some omega-6 and it is a monounsaturated fat, it is so rich in the antioxidants that it can help protect some of the oxidation that comes in from some of the other uh, fats, for example, from the pine nuts. So if you have some true olive oil that's in there up at the top of the ingredient list, then it can help counteract some of that by negating it with the uh, hydroxytyrosol, which is one of the active antioxidants in olive oil, which is very powerful at protecting the fats in the first place. I do wanna say a lot of the things that I talk about here at Costco, you can get through Thrive Market. Now, Thrive Market doesn't have the refrigerated things that I'm talking about today. They do have some frozen items, but they have so many of the good low carb, paleo, all kinds of different snacks that I talk about in all my other videos. So if you live somewhere where you can't get good healthy food, you don't have a Whole Foods close by, or you don't feel like spending Whole Foods prices, highly recommend you check out Thrive Market. I put a link down below so that viewers of my channel can check them out and utilize them. They deliver this stuff right to your doorstep so you don't have to go to the grocery store. It makes it super, super, super easy and it's very cost effective. So it's what I use a lot of times when it comes down to being able to get uh, more difficult, healthy items at a good price, and I get them to my doorstep. So there's a special link down below. Highly, highly, highly recommend you check them out, please, after this video. Now, what about like this carnitas here? Uh, how do we rate that? Okay, so maybe for example, you're doing a low carb diet and you're trying to get some high fats in there and you say, oh, this carnitas this could be good because it is very low carb. Look at this. I mean, what a cool find. 14 grams of fat, zero carbs. That means they're not even adding sugar to it. So here's what it looks like but let's look at the ingredients. We have pork, water, lard, some seasoning, which has salt maltodextrin. Look, at, I'm not gonna get too upset about a little bit of seasoning having maltodextrin. If you were to have a little packet of stevia, you'd probably get some maltodextrin. So it's so low down in the seasoning. Well, I mean, it's high in the seasoning, but it's the last ingredient ultimately, other than garlic powder and salt. Pork, water, and lard. Now, lard is generally coming from pork. The only thing that might make it better is if it was cooked in leaf lard. Now, leaf lard is lard that comes from um, like the kidney visceral fat region of the pig, and it's more of a pliable fat that has a, be a better fatty acid profile. I, I can't complain about this. Like this is super clean because it's not loaded with a bunch of cruddy chemicals. It's pretty darn clean. So if you're looking for something that, how many servings do we get out of this? Seven servings for $14. $2 per three ounce serving, 20 grams of protein, really nice find and I think this has been around for a while and I hope that it stays around for a while. Here's some smoky pork tenderloin. Compare this to like the carnitas, maple and honey glaze. Look at these ingredients here. 19 grams of carbs, 17 grams of sugar. Look at the ingredient list. Okay, so the carnitas was definitely the way to go on this one. Then we have, let's see, what about this braised beef chuck pot roast? What do we have in this? Beef, gravy, tomato, cal actually not bad. Some sugar, yeast extract, which is kind of like MSG. Six grams of carbs, modified cornstarch. There's yeast extract in the stock and yeast extract in something else. So I'm gonna pass on that. Let's look at the sodium content. 560 for five ounces. That's not as good of a fine, oh, but the price is decent. 7.99 a pound and it's pretty pre-cooked. So bargain wise, it's not bad. Then we have this smoked pulled pork. Let's see what's in this. Vegetarian fed pork, that doesn't mean anything because soy is vegetarian. But what's up? Oh, nice. Pork, water, salt, spice extract, sodium nitrite. Okay, zero grams of carbs. This is a good find. Well, what's the price? 11 bucks, 5.49 a pound. That's not bad at all. Some of you might be saying, but I saw that study that said that nitrites and nitrates can cause cancer and that they're bad. Nitrites and nitrates are generally naturally occurring. If you add celery to something, it's a nitrite and a nitrate, okay? What they're talking about is synthetic, not good nitrites and nitrates, which are not found all that often anymore. And the other piece of the equation is not just the nitrites and nitrates, it's what else is in that processed meat that they're feeding people in these studies. So when they look at nitrites and nitrates, there's also all kinds of modified food starches, natural flavors, this and that. I don't worry about it. I'm not worried about the nitrites and nitrates. It's better if it doesn't have it because it usually means that it's less cured and it's a little bit more fresh. 
but that's the only thing that I pay attention to in nitrites and nitrates. We're looking for natural nitrites and nitrates. Those are precursors to amazing things in the body, and our body can convert the nitrite into nitrate, and that does a lot of positive things in our body as far as nitric oxide synthase and various positive things. So don't be steered away by that. That's not that big of a deal. That's a really good value. Flip it around to check some other stuff out. I found these grilled Mediterranean style chicken skewers. I am all about Mediterranean diets and Mediterranean keto. Um, the price on this just isn't great, but pretty clean. Let's check it out. Chicken skewers, grilled Mediterranean style, 24 grams of protein per serving, vegetarian fed, no growth hormone, gluten preservative free, made with extra virgin olive oil, and they're fully cooked for $11.99. So it's a little under $7 a pound, which if it was organic, that would be a really good deal. But let's see what's in it. We've got chicken breast, water, potato starch, extra virgin olive oil, vinegar, salt, dextrose. I love the fact that it has olive oil up towards the top. It doesn't have avocado, or excuse me, canola oil or vegetable oils. And then we have vinegar, salt, lemon juice, dextrose, which is a bummer, dehydrated onion, and some natural flavors. So definitely some things I don't like, but the big heavy hitters I'm approving of. And what I mean by the heavy hitters, I'm talking about the oils, okay? The things towards the top of the ingredient list, especially when we compare it to this one. Check this out. Chicken, water, dehydrated, chicken flavor. So then they're adding some flavors in there and canola oil, rice starts. So between these, yes, 685 and 1199. Yeah. Uh, chicken breast bites, 1199, uh, $1.19 each. Okay, long story short, that's not a good value compared to this. You could put those in a Ziploc bag and be in a better value. But then what about these grilled chicken strips for 434 a pound that we see right here? Well, let's investigate a little bit because I've bought these before and I'll tell you, they taste a little weird, but for convenience, they are pretty darn good. We have ingredients, boneless chicken breast, water, and then 2% of the following, vinegar, salt, and natural flavors. I would love it if it didn't have the natural flavors, but come on, can't argue with that clean of ingredients in a prepackaged chicken for $4.34 a pound in Ripoff, California, okay? Not bad. I hate cooking chicken. It is annoying to me. I prefer ground chicken because it's easier for me to cook. Chicken breast just drives me nuts. I have to trim the fat. I have to do this. I have to get my hands messy. I have to worry about salmonella. I'm just not a fan of it. Anyhow, if it's pre-cooked and it's halfway clean like that, I'm for it because it is a lean, clean source of protein and tremendous for whatever diet you're really doing. Now I found these chicken meatballs. Check this out. Chicken raised without antibiotics. That's always a plus. No nitrites or nitrates added, except for possibly the natural ones that are occurring. So a lot of times you'll see that. No nitrites or nitrates added, but it will be except for naturally occurring nitrites or nitrates in celery juice, et cetera, et cetera. That's why you don't really have to worry about it too much. So there's six grams of sugar coming from the, the cranberries. Chicken raised without antibiotics, just get rid of the cranberries. 2% less of jalapeno peppers, some cane sugar, some maple sugar, uh, extract of rosemary. So at least it's clean chicken though. Uh, you might wanna just give it a bath or something. So I like the fact there's a little bit of sugar in it, but I like the fact that these are actual meatballs and might taste really dang good. 580 milligrams of salt. I always look at salt because it's a good indicator of how processed something is. That one doesn't make the cut. This one makes the cut and this one makes the cut. This one, if you're looking for a little treat, it would be okay, but it's not ideal. I'm not gonna go through a lot of the sausages because we'd be here forever. And I'm gonna do a specific sausage and also cured meat video. Uh, but there's one thing that I did wanna touch on that I think is just a great product and really, really clean and definitely makes my cut. And I'm so happy to see it here. Look at this. It is expensive per pound, but if you're looking for good clean deli meat, this organic Plainville turkey breast, you get three packs for $13.99. Again, it's probably half that anywhere else. No nitrites or nitrates, except for naturally occurring in sea salt. Interesting, right? Naturally occurring in sea salt. Nitrates and nitrates are everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Don't freak out about it, okay? But let's look at the ingredients for this deli meat. We have organic turkey breast, water, and sea salt. Does it get any more clean than that? Find of the day, and I'm so happy to share this with you people because I feel like if you go out to Costco and you buy it, you can convince them to keep it on the shelves because I always get concerned that this more expensive upper end meat is just going to disappear because uh, it doesn't get purchased. And I feel like it's so important that we continue to drive home the message that there is demand for this stuff. So all kinds of different deli meats we could look at. Uh, I'll tell you right now, the prosciutto, the ham, things like that are the better ways to go with the high quality meats versus like the turkeys and the salamis generally, because prosciutto is usually just pork and salt. 
And I've talked about this in some other videos, so I don't want to bore you in details with this one. But if you do want to see me do a specific video on cured meats or a specific video on sausage and things like that, put it down below in the comment section. And if I get enough interac um, interaction with it, then I will make sure I do that video. What is the deal with these egg bites? Are they good to go or are they not good to go? A lot of people have asked me about them. So let's take a look. Spinach and bell pepper egg whites. These are the egg white ones. We have egg whites and cottage cheese, nice. So these are a lot like the Starbucks ones, except they're made with cottage cheese instead of potato and cornstarch. So cottage cheese, pasteurized cream, sea salt, Monterey Jack, plain yogurt? They add yogurt to it, nice. We get a cultured effect. Spinach, unsalted butter, roasted bell pepper, cornstarch green, a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of canola oil at the bottom. I am not gonna trip about that. So this one is 220 calories for one package. Okay, let's compare that to the one that is not the egg white. That one is 310 with egg, cottage cheese. Okay, however, here's the thing though. The fat from the eggs in the whole egg version is going to be a better fat than just the fat coming from the cottage cheese, but we know that they're not using organic or good quality eggs. So why would we want the fat from that? Let's just go with the egg white in that case and get the fat from the cottage cheese and a little bit from the yogurt. So I would vote to go for the egg white one, whether you are doing low carb or not, so you get a slightly cleaner option. Usually these are in the regular refrigerated section, so I'm gonna to touch on it. Uh, with sockeye salmon, things like that, you wanna go for that as your smoked salmon. Um, not necessarily some of the Norwegian stuff because it's heavily adulterated, but mainly it's contaminated is the big thing we wanna worry about. So the smoked sockeye is a better price uh, or a better place to go, not as good of a price. 18.9 cents per pound versus 14.38 cents per pound. So we just have to be careful with that. Um, it's worth it to go with the sockeye instead. I think that about sums it up. You know, there's other things I could go down the other refrigerated section, but I wanted to go down the kind of the prepared food refrigerated section just to show you what they have there. If you want to see me do another video in the traditional prepared food section, uh, holler at me down below in the comments and let me know. Because again, I need your feedback on what stores you want me to go to, what kinds of videos you want me to do, what kinds of products you want me to review, and ultimately what sections of the store you want me to do. Because without your feedback, I cannot figure out the right kinds of things to do. I can't lean on the YouTube algorithm all the time. So I'm back in the truck and you know, I didn't buy the Chipino because I just didn't feel like I needed it. I bought a couple of things, but I think I'm gonna run back in and get that Chipino. I think that was the coolest find there. I think when we recap, it was the Chipino, it was that turkey breast, that sliced turkey breast that I told you about. That Mediterranean chicken was pretty cool. The chicken strips, which are super cool and convenient, those were all really good finds. And that Parma ham and the prosciutto, yummy. That stuff is so dang good. Now, I wish I could say that those egg bites were a new find, but they're not a new find. They've been there for a long time and clearly they sell well and they're priced way better. Anyhow, I'm rambling on, but that stuff was all good. I just need to go back and get that Chipino. And I'm staying at my father-in-law's right now because I had to be up here in Northern California filming some stuff for another company I do some work with. And I think he'd be really happy if I brought back that Chipino. And I just wanted to share that with you. That's just me. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.